Alright everyone, so today I'm just going to talk about the differences between the uh, MacBook and MacBook Pro and why I generally believe for most people the uh, MacBook might actually be a better proposition for you. Okay, so let's begin. So some of the common aspects to both laptops. Both use Intel Core 2 dual processors with 4 megabytes of on-chip L2 cache. Uh, both use the same type of memory, 667 megahertz DDR2 SD RAM. Both have the maximum capacity of 4 gigabytes of RAM, running on an 800 megahertz front side of bus. Both feature the uh, MagSafe power adapter, uh, iSight video camera, um, gigabit Ethernet, FireWire 400, USB 2.0 as well as digital audio input and output and standard analog okay. in addition uh, the MacBook Pro comes standard with a super drive built in across the line um, backlit keyboard um, the 17 inch MacBook Pro comes with three USB ports 15 inch only comes with two both come with the uh, FireWire 800 ports, so it's aimed for a, a high-end uh, disk-intensive applications. Express card 34 slot, as well as uh, different display resolutions. So with the 17-inch, you have the uh, capability to get a 1920 by 1200 native uh, or high-definition display built in, and you have the standard 1680 by 1050, which comes from the factory. So that's a 17 inch. Okay. So, in terms of processing horsepower, both are actually pretty well uh, evenly matched up. You can custom order a 2.6 gigahertz uh, Core 2 dual chip in the MacBook Pros. The fastest you can get is a 2.2 MacBook. Okay. But in terms of just raw CPU intensive stuff, such as uh, programming, uh, Adobe Photoshop or maybe even just uh, QuickTime encoding they're actually pre pretty well evenly matched I mean I don't think you would notice too much of a difference between a 2.2 and a 2.4 gigahertz CPU so in terms of raw processing power they're pretty well evenly matched okay um, so what is the difference between the two why are you paying the extra money well a lot of it has to come with the uh, with the display, the resolution, as well as the uh, graphics capability of the MacBook Pro. Okay. So with the MacBook Pro, you get a 8600 uh, NVIDIA GeForce GT. Standard uh, build comes with 128 megs of RAM. You can customize it to get 256 megs of RAM. Okay. And with the MacBook. Uh, you're going to be uh, using Intel GMA X3100 graphics with 144 meg of uh, system memory being used for the graphics processor. Okay. Now, in reality, where does it actually make a difference? Well, so far to this point, the only applications that really use the, the GPU or the core image frameworks of a MacBook Pro or it's things if you're doing things like uh, Final Cut Studio okay because if you look at it if you are going to get Final Cut Studio um, one of the things it says is that Final Cut Studio is not compatible with Intel integrated graphics processors I think uh, Apple might be kind of lying with that I think I, I've heard that you can actually install Final Cut Studio on a MacBook and even on the Mac Mini but if you're going to be using Final Cut Studio, you should use a MacBook Pro. Okay. So basically, the only applications that will require the great, or that's going to take advantage of the graphics processing, are applications such as uh, motion, uh, maybe color, not compressor, compressor wouldn't, or maybe some other applications such as a Keynote, iMovie, maybe iPhoto. So essentially anything that's going to use the core image frameworks in Mac OS X is going to use a GPU. And so far a lot of the applications that use core image frameworks are only the high-end Apple applications. 
There are a couple other uh, companies that will use the core image stuff, but not too many. Right now, it's mostly Apple, and it's mostly when you're dealing with Final Cut Studio. That's the only time when the GPU is really going to make a difference, is uh, right now, mostly Final Cut Studio. So if you're contemplating, well, should I get a MacBook Pro? And if, you, if a lot of your work is doing Photoshop, Illustrator, Dreamweaver, InDesign, then I would say it doesn't make a difference. You can very well live with a MacBook, get Photoshop CS3, and it's going to be great. Because the thing about Photoshop and the Adobe applications right now is that they all work off the CPU. I mean, to my knowledge, I don't think uh, Photoshop was not built around the GPU, even CS3. So, you know, if you're doing Photoshop, you're fine on the MacBook. It's only the hardcore video editing professionals who need the, uh, the expandability or the graphics crunching power that's going to require a MacBook Pro. So, so I mean, that's, that's just the main difference is the GPU and being able to use Final Cut for the most part. Okay? Um, so the real difference is now expandability. I personally like the MacBook more because it is more expandable and I think as time goes on I'll probably be able to use the MacBook a little bit more and here's why so on either laptop you're not going to be able to upgrade the GPU you're not going to be able to upgrade the CPU RAM is uh, 4 gigabytes on both models so you can upgrade the RAM to the same level on both MacBook and MacBook Pro so what about the hard drive? Well, as it turns out, Apple uh, classified that the hard drive is a user replaceable product. So you can do it yourself. And because they say you can do it yourself, that means that if you want to swap out the hard drive in the MacBook, you're not going to avoid the warranty opening it up and just swapping out the hard drive. It's very easy. There are other YouTube videos, other videos of people doing it all the time. I do it all the time. So you're not gonna, you don't have to worry about wrecking the warranty if you're going to swap out the hard drive. That's different on the MacBook Pro because um, if you open the case, if you do anything more than upgrade the RAM on the MacBook Pro, you void the warranty no matter what. So right now, the biggest um, hard drive that you can get for a MacBook Pro without destroying the warranty is a 250 gig serial ATA drive for $225 okay and once you get it in there unless you don't want to avoid the warranty or unless you don't want to send it off to someone else and send it to an authorized dealer to upgrade the hard drive that's what you're stuck with that okay and you're stuck with that you're gonna pay $225 but with a MacBook because it is a user replaceable product what you can do is you can go to Newegg.com, look it up, go to Newegg, and right now they're selling a 320 gigabyte, 5400 RPM hard drive. You can get a 320 gig hard drive for $180 on Newegg. And you don't have to worry about wrecking your warranty. So from an upgradeability standpoint, MacBook is more or less, at least in terms of storage solutions, it's expandable it's very expandable. I mean even when the solid state drives drop down in price I mean one day you could possibly get like a 256 gig solid state drive and you can just throw that into the MacBook and it should just work no problem and you know you buy Apple Care and these things you don't want to you don't want to violate your Apple Care warranty so the only way that you're not going to violate the Apple Care warranty is by getting a MacBook and then you can upgrade it no problems okay so, in terms of being able to keep the laptop longer, that's why I would recommend going with the MacBook. You can upgrade the hard drive, not worry about the warranty issue. You basically get, um, you know, it's a nice laptop. There's no latch in the middle to break off because it is a magnetic latching system. You know, nice screen, good saturation, yeah. So that's just my take on it. I mean, yes, it has a better GPU, but I mean, unless you're using Final Cut Studio, it really doesn't matter. So that's just my take. All right. Um, all right. So that's about it. Peace.